Us, your platoon leader, he gives you your mission. He hands you the paper. Okay? You spend 30 minutes building a warning order. You spend 30 minutes making the, the warning order. Now is your time to do all of your coordinations. Okay? All the small things. There's a lot of coordinations that you're gonna do. The most important one that you're gonna do is fire support. Okay? How many of y'all have been overseas? How many of y'all have been mortared? Right? Terrifying, right? Fucking sucks. Isn't it great when we get to do that to other people? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we always, of course, want to have, fight an unfair fight. We want to bring our mortars to bear. We want to bring our cast to bear, our close air support. We want to do all those kinds of good things. We want to hurt the enemy. All right, and of course, we want to take good pictures of our grandfather with an 82 millimeter between his legs. Right. Good to know that your grandfather was the exact same person as you are. <laughs> All right, next slide. All right, task. We're going to plan fires for the patrols and prepare overlays. All right. You're going to learn how to plan for fire using TT Lodak and create a sterile and non sterile overlay. Slide. All right, planning. These are your general rules. There's a lot of stuff in there. Plan fires. Take a picture of it. Okay. A lot of this is more officer speak at your level, not as important. Alright, do we have any uh, E6s that are above? This is your lane. Alright, next slide. Alright, fire support tasks. You gotta locate your target, you gotta integrate your assets. You gotta destroy it. It's something that they can do for you. They can destroy stuff when you know. They can provide you illumination. Right? We all have these cool guy nods and stuff like that, but I'm telling you right now, it's a lot nicer to have uh, to have flares overhead. Alright, next slide. This is what they can do for you. They can help you move to contact. They can help you in case of a chance contact. All right? They can blow stuff up before you charge. They're telling you to keep it simple, then they throw all these words at you. So keep that in mind. Take a picture of it. All right, next slide. All right, this is important. Write this down. All right, this is TT Lodak. Okay? This is how you organize your thoughts. This is how you organize your requests for fire. And you organize your fires. Target, trigger, <coughs> location, observer, delivery system, Attack guidance slash method of engagement and communication <coughs> method. Do we have any FOs in this room? We have one. Okay. I am not an FO. Put that out there. But I have planned for fires, and this is what we use. What do you all use? What does your FSO pre prefer? Uh, oh, I came from the Marine Corps, so oh. a little bit shorter and different. Yeah. I don't want to make a Marine Corps joke, but I won't. I mean, but I mean, is the basics the same? Would you yes. request? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and take a second. Make sure to take a picture of it. Well, let's talk about these. All right, targets. You're going to have a sequence of numbers, like Alpha Bravo 001. This is just a way of organizing your fires. Okay? You might have a bunch of different squads 
asking for a bunch of different targets. You need some way of organizing it. Right? Alpha Bravo 001 through Alpha Bravo 005. Okay? You're going to use your own internal sequence until those targets are approved <coughs> by hire. So you're going to come up with your fires plan. I want these fires. Okay? Alpha Bravo 001 through Alpha Bravo 005. Well, all the other squads are also putting in their fires plans. And that S3 or that, or that uh, fire support officer, he's going to look at it and he's going to say, I can only support this. So he's going to kick back a bunch of it and say, he says, I can only do this. So out of your five fires, he might only give you two of them based off of what he feels is necessary. And then he'll give you the target sequence based off of what he has. So your, your target 001 might be his target 003. Does that make sense? You're going to play by his rules because he has the guns. Trigger. This is what actions are going to warrant the use of the target. So, basically why you're going to fire. You can have a bunch of different fires. Okay? It's not just when you see the enemy. You can call for fire for a number of reasons. Your trigger might be, hey, if we see the enemy's reinforcements, we're going to fire on their reinforcements. Your trigger might be, hey, if we see the enemy, we're going to fire on them. Who's seen, uh, who's seen uh, We Were Soldiers? Before they landed those helicopters, remember how they shot all those rounds onto the drop zone? Onto the, uh, excuse me, the landing zone? All right? Their trigger was the helicopters being one minute out. So at one minute out, that was the trigger of those fires. And the guns knew one minute out, we start firing. Boom, 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 boom. Right? That was a pre planned target, that HLZ. That was their trigger. Location, pretty simple. The only thing that guys mess up on is giving an eight digit grid. All right, your observer. Who's going to actually spot the rounds? Gone are the days of unobserved fires. Squad leader RTO. Usually it's a squad leader and RTO for your operations. Squad leader is going to be the primary, <laughs> RTO is going to be an option. Delivery system, that's just a fancy way of saying who's going to be doing the shooting. What kind of mortars do we have available to us at a company level, at a light infantry company? 60. 260. Well, yeah, you guys have one for us. Okay. Cool. But well, we might have different assets, right? 105s, higher than that, yeah. <coughs> 120s, all right. Attack guidance. This is where it comes in handy to have somebody who is acquainted with FO procedures, okay? How many rounds, the fuse selection, the sheath, all those kinds of hard things. If you're a private, all you're, all you're concerned about is like how many rounds. Right, I want two <coughs> high explosive. What's up, Walker? You okay? Good, sir. All right. I believe you. And finally, the communication method. Call sign and the net to be used for the call. Primary and alternate. So we're going to call for fires. Primary is going to be telling fires. Company is going to be, uh, excuse me, company fires is going to be primary. So you just write in the frequency and call sign. Just like your nine line medevacs. Everyone got written this down? All right. Go ahead. First sure. All right. Write the, uh, take a picture of this. As part of your coordinations, you're going to have to produce an overlay. This is your plan to make fires that you turn into higher so that way they can understand your plan. And they can do all the deconfliction. They can make sure that where you're inserting isn't where your buddy wants to call for fire. That's deconfliction. All available on page 3 3. All right, everyone's got a picture taken of this? All right, then we'll show examples of all this going forward. Okay? You're going to have a lot of information from your operations order. All right? Your operations order, ideally, is going to tell you where the enemy is. All right? They're going to tell you where, where those uh, assets are. So you're going to incorporate all this into your fires plan.
for your overlays. It's pretty simple. You're going to need some mat markers, you're going to need a mat, and you need some kind of covering, a clear, uh, clear covering. How many of you guys know what acetate is? Yeah, acetate's nice, right? A lot of times you won't have acetate though, so you're going to take those document protectors that we're going to give you, right, and you're going to use those. Insert the mat and draw the, uh, draw the clear, take out the mat, suddenly you've got a, a cover. Right, that's a poor man's acetate. All right, next. All right, next. All right, next. It's a little bit confusing. Next. Actually, you know what? Here we go. All right, so we understand the enemies here. This is our primary route in blue. This is our alternate route. In yellow, we're objective. Keep on going. Next. 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 It's a little bit much. Next. Keep on flipping through for a second. This is a little bit advanced for. Okay, keep on going. Uh, all right, there we go. All right, this is what you're, go back one more. Back to where it says the uh, TT load I've measured. Thank you for time. All right, this is the product. So, you're going to have your map. It's going to show the locations of the actual spots. And this is your TT load act matrix. This is how you're going to organize your call for fire. <coughs> so there's our T T L O D A C for target one, target two, target three, as many targets as you need to keep on doing. Okay, for your simple operations. Try to plan three targets. Maybe one target to support your insertion. Maybe one target in the vicinity of the objective. And maybe one target to cover your extraction. You know, wouldn't it be nice to have mortar fire covering you as you're getting back on the trucks? Yeah, because that's a dangerous time as you're, as you're getting on, uh, out of the trucks and you're getting back onto it. It's dangerous. Okay. This is your time for all you guys who uh, like to play all those video games, all those like Command and Conquer games, this is your time to feel like a general and use a little strategy. All right, next. Sorry. You got a question? Yes. Uh, so yeah. who, <coughs> who is assigning target one, target two, target three? This is your request. So you're, you're assigning zeros of one, two, three. Okay, you're pushing that up to higher. They're going to say, oh, your zeros are two, no, it's no good because that's another guy's insertion point. Okay. So you push up what you have, and they'll come up and they'll and they'll take everybody's plan, and then they'll push out what they have. Okay. Track. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Next. 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 Can we get another list of coordinations? All right. This is what it's actually going to look like. Okay. We've got. A little square up here, you've got your acetate over your mat. You've got your little square with your numbers for your grids. You've got a north seeking arrow. Okay? And then you start that and you do your uh, primary and alternate route. Keep it next. All right. Here's our target number one. See that? It looks like a little target, like a little crosshair. You got your target number right here, one. And then down here below, we're going to have our TT Lodak, and it's going to say target number one, all the details. So that way we're not cluttering up our actual area of operations. All right, here's uh, one more. One more. All right, here's the finished box. Here's what it looks like. Definitely take a picture of this. So, as I said before, we've got our squares to orient us to the, uh, to the map, okay? 
Our ORP location with a grid location train feature, link up. Okay. Here's our TT LODAC matrix down below. It's describing target one, target two, and target three. So here's all the info for target one, which is right here. Target two and target three. These other points, okay? I see primary in blue, which is an insertion right here up to our objective, objective to our link up point. You can tell it's number one because right here, this is like our legend. So one, I know that's our departure point. Two is insertion complete. Three is our ORP, which should be right here. Four should be our objective, which is right there. So this is kind of like our legend. Does everyone understand that? Yes. Again, that's to declutter our map. So that way we don't have like some guy's handwriting and it just says all that shit right over where you're supposed to be seeing the map. Okay, does everyone get this? Okay, there's some other information, all right? This is kind of like your, uh, this is like administrator information, all right? The unit that prepared it, the ranger that actually prepared it. This is important because if somebody from higher has a question, we need to know, I mean, if you come up with something bad, like, who the fuck made this? You know, and they need to be able to ask you a question like, hey, what did you mean right here? Hey, what do you mean right here? And now they know that Ranger McLaughlin made it. A lot of guys forget to put their unit. Like, yeah, of course it's my unit. Well, which unit are you? Your platoon leader doesn't know. He gets four different overlays. They all look the fucking same. Okay. Day time group prepared. You always need to talk about the map sheet. Like what map you're using to prepare it. Because if you use one map and he uses another, those grids might not ma ma match up. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's all your admin info. All right, go ahead, next. Next, 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 next. All right, questions, moving on. No? Nope. All right. All right, we have three different types of coordinations. Coordinations are also covered in your Ranger handbooks. We have operations coordinations, we have fire support coordinations, and intelligence coordinations. All right, the most important thing in your coordination is to understand. Let's assume that we're all squad leaders. You're going to do your coordination with your platoon leader. So you come up to him, and you come up to him with your plan. You're like, hey, sir, this is what we're thinking about doing. Before you come up to him, before you come up to that <coughs> platoon leader, if you're first squad leader, you better be talking with second squad, uh, third squad leader before you come up to your PL. Before you come up, you, you need to do your adjacent unit coordinations. You need to talk to your other guys, your other squad leaders, before you go up to higher. All right. All this kind of stuff. Gentlemen, we're having to rush through this, and I apologize. All right, again, we will make this available for you. Till then, take pictures of it. Now, hit the highlights of it. Right now, think of the coordinations as your chance to make sure that you're not all fucked up with your boss, okay? To make sure that you're not going to call for artillery where your other friend is landing in his helicopter. Or that your routes don't come at each other. So you don't, you avoid uh, fracture side. All right, next. All right, make a picture of this real quick. Again, gentlemen, I apologize, but we have to get you going on your practical exercise. Take a quick picture. This is also your chance during your coordinations to ask questions for your platoon leader. Hey, what did you mean by this? Hey, this is a little bit messed up. Hey, do you have any more information? All right, next. Keep on going. All right, keep on going. 
There's also the coordinations. This is important. At the end of your coordinations, you're going to have any kind of changes to the timeline, and you should have deconflicted routes, fires, any kind of helicopter landing sites or insertion points, any kind of rehearsal areas. Let's say we all have a rehearsal, uh, like a mock helicopter. Right? We all want to train on it because we're going to do a helicopter insertion. Your PL is now going to come in and say, okay, first squad, you have it from 1300 to 1330. Second squad, you got it from 1330 to 1400. All that kind of stuff. Right? This is just hammering stuff out. Go ahead and write this down. The guys who should be present at your rehearsals is the squad leader in the RTO. Next, next, next. All right, coordinations. All right, again, squad leader RTO. You'll be there with note-taking material. You're going to go through all this kind of stuff. Go and take a picture. This is where you're going to hand in that overlay that we were talking about, our TT Lodak. Right? You made it so that way you understand how your fires are going to go and then you're giving up to your boss, so that way he understands what your plan is. All right, next. All right, that was rushed through. I apologize. Does anybody not have any, any idea about coordinations, what the point is? All right, so what's, what, what's the biggest kind of coordinations you're going to do that we talked a lot about? Fire support. Fire support. We also have intelligence coordinations. We have operations coordinations. Those are the three different things. All right, if you guys have problems with coordinations, you have a coordinations checklist in your, in your handbook. So the first time you do coordinations with us, and when you do coordinations with your boss, go through your coordinations checklist and hit it line by line. You got it? All right. All right. So everyone stay in place, shake it out. We're getting ready to do a practical exercise of TLP1, which is building a warning order. What's going to happen is we're going to take Squads one and three, and don't do anything yet. You're going to go over there with Sergeant Jimenez in room 157, which is right across the way. Right? He's going to 